Hey, what's up YouTube? It is February 6th, and today Apple seeds the second beta of iOS 11.3 to register developers. And with this release, I have a major new feature that is coming to iOS to talk about. In today's beta, we not only see bug and performance fixes for the OS, but we also have our first look at the detailed battery health section in the settings app. So if we take a look in the settings app and navigate to battery, under that section, we now have a battery health beta tag. So if we go ahead and navigate into that, you can see that it displays the maximum capacity. My iPhone 6S Plus is currently at 87%. And it says this is a measure of battery capacity relative to when it was new. Lower capacity may result in fewer hours of usage between charges. And then right below that, it says peak performance capability. And right below that, it says your battery is currently supporting normal peak performance. So if your battery is still in good health to provide the peak power, the screen will look just like my iPhone 6S Plus does. It will look something like this. The notification simply says that the battery is supporting the maximum performance that it can, and there is no action that the user can take. But if your iPhone unexpectedly shuts down because it cannot sustain maximum performance, your device will enter this state with performance management enabled. Now this performance management feature slows down the CPU dynamically to reduce peak power demands on the battery. And if you don't want this feature to enable, meaning if you don't want your device to be throttled, one option is you can get a battery replacement. But if you aren't notified that you need one, then you have a second option as well. Alternatively, you can disable this throttling feature manually, which is a new feature found in iOS 11.3 beta 2. And to disable this, all you have to do is simply select the blue disable link. Now, if you have chosen to disable this feature, your phone will display something like this, indicating that performance management has been disabled. But as a quick side note, if you disable this feature, it cannot be toggled again until the device unexpectedly shuts down. Apple says that it will automatically re-enable performance management each time the device unexpectedly shuts down, and honestly, that is just another annoying feature to me in my personal opinion. If your device keeps crashing, every time it crashes, you will have to manually go in and disable this throttling feature. It's not something that you can just click once and forget about. So since this feature is just in beta, it'll be interesting to see what new features and what new information is displayed in future betas of iOS 11.3. But for now, it just displays the maximum capacity, as well as if your iPhone is performing at peak performance. Anyway, I'm very impressed with how accurate the maximum capacity percentage is at. I just recently took this iPhone into the Apple Store and had them take a look at its battery. And just a couple days ago when they did this, they said my battery was at 87%. So I was completely blown away when I saw this feature was here in the first place. And then secondly, when it was actually displaying 87%. Anyway, with how accurate this percentage is compared to what the geniuses at Apple discovered, I'm guessing that this percentage is determined using the same method that would be used at the Genius Bar if you took your phone in and had them take a look at it themselves. So that is just a quick look at the detailed battery health section. Again, this feature is just in beta and it will likely be expanded in future betas of 11.3. Long story short, it's great to see that Apple has already released a beta of this feature in just the second beta iteration of 11.3. Now, Beta 1 introduced a ton of new features as well, so if you want more information about all the new features found in 11.3, feel free to check out my last video, which goes into that in more detail. Anyway, if you're interested in installing this software today, check the link provided in the description of this video to download the iOS 11 developer configuration profile. But for now, this beta is only seeded to developers, and a public beta should be coming out here shortly later today or in a few days to come. And once that happens, say you're watching this video a few days later, you can easily head over to Apple's website and sign up for the public beta testing program. But until a public beta comes out, you'll have to use the official developer configuration profile to install it. And just as a side note for future betas, this configuration profile will be exactly the same. So save this link or refer to this video to download the developer configuration profile. So once you click on the link in the description, it will go ahead and install the configuration profile. It will then prompt you to reboot your device. And once your device starts back up, you can now head into the settings app, navigate to software update, and the iOS 11.3 beta 2 software update will be waiting for you there. 
just make sure to have your phone plugged in and or have it charged past 50% and make sure it is connected to Wi-Fi before you begin the installation. Anyway, taking a more detailed look at 11.3, aside from this new battery section, I really haven't had too much time to play around with the OS, and I haven't discovered too many outward facing changes aside from this new feature found within the settings app. Anyway, the build number for this beta is 15E5178F, and of course it was released today on February 6th. Now since that is a long beta build number, and considering we're only on beta 2 of 11.3, and considering that 11.3, as by Apple, is not going to be released until later this spring, we're likely to see a lot more betas to come before the software is officially released by Apple. In the end, however, this beta software is performing rather well. Taking a look at the Geekbench scores, we received a single core score of 2535 and a multi core score of 4471. Now that is compared to 11.3 beta 1 which received a 2541 single core score and a 4418 multi core score. So as you can see this second beta receives an ever so slightly lower single core score but it actually receives a pretty decent update on the multi core score. Granted taking a look at the big picture these scores don't differ too much so for day to day use I would highly doubt you would notice any difference at all coming from beta 1 to beta 2. I just want to give you a quick jailbreak update. If you are anticipating to jailbreak in the near future, I would highly suggest to stay away from this beta update as it will be hard to downgrade to a lower software that can be jailbroken once a jailbreak comes out. As of right now, the only iOS 11 iterations that can be jailbroken are iOS 11 all the way up to iOS 11.1.2 and we currently have the Electra jailbreak which uses an alternative to Substrate to install tweaks and themes. And then we also have the Liber iOS jailbreak, which sounds like it's going to be updated once Cydia is updated by Sorg himself. Anyway, those are the two jailbreaks we have for iOS 11, but after that with 11.2, 11.2.1, and 11.2.2, we may have not one but two new kernel level vulnerabilities that could be coming to the OS, which could be used to jailbreak that firmware in the future. And I'm of course talking about the exploits discovered by the security research company Zimperium. But in recent news as of yesterday on February 6th, the developer Adam Donfield who's responsible for finding vulnerabilities and who has created exploits like the Ziva exploit in the past, he actually states that he might have found a major vulnerability in 11.2.5 that theoretically someone could use to write an exploit for and then said exploit could be used in conjunction with others to create a jailbreak for iOS 11.2.5. Now, neither the Zimperium exploits discovered or Adam Donfield's vulnerability that they discovered could be used to create a jailbreak by themselves, but not to fear, Coolstar has tweeted out himself that the patches he uses in his Electra jailbreak actually work on 11.2.x. So if a new exploit does come out for those firmwares, it doesn't sound like it'd be too hard for Coolstar to update his Electra jailbreak to run on the newer firmwares. So hopefully one of these exploits will come out with a write-up very soon, and we might actually receive another iOS 11 jailbreak this year. And lastly, pertaining to jailbreaking, I just wanted to state that Coolstar himself said he's working on an alternative way to update Cydia and its dependencies to run on the Electra jailbreak. So we might actually see a modified or a partial version of Cydia run on the Electra jailbreak before Cydia is officially updated by Soric. So in the next few weeks, it will be very interesting to see what happens if Coolstar actually does come out and release a beta update for his Electra jailbreak that actually supports and runs Cydia to some extent. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching today's video on iOS 11.3 Beta 2. Again, I hope this video can be used so you guys can see some of the new features, but like I said, I would highly suggest not to update to this software if you intend to jailbreak. If you guys like this video, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. I really appreciate your support. If you guys want to stay updated on new jailbreaking related information and updates, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon to be notified when I release new videos just like this one. It's very exciting times for the jailbreaking community because we might be seeing an iOS 11 jailbreak utility with Cydia support coming out sooner than a lot of us may have thought. Anyway guys, until next time, this is Tony signing out.